We have revealed the dhikr, the reminder, which is one of the words for the Qur'an. And verily upon us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, upon us is the preservation of it. This is a promise in the Qur'an that Allah will preserve the Qur'an. And the reality of the preservation of the Qur'an is without doubt one of the miraculous aspects of the Qur'an and one of the proof, the proofs and the evidences that it is from Allah. In fact, you will find that nearly every type of book and scripture and writing through time goes through many alterations and distortions and corruptions. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said that verily we have revealed the dhikr, the reminder, and upon us is the preservation of it. Now this may not be the case so much today with the invention of the printing press, but of course in ancient times when books were largely transcribed by scribes, then there was a lot of opportunity for corruptions and distortions and additions and deletions to take place. Yet throughout the 1400 years of Islamic history, the Quran has remained the same. In fact, it is one of the most remarkable things that you could take a copy of the Quran today and you compare it with a Qur'an in Saudi Arabia and you compare it with a Qur'an in Morocco and you compare it with a Qur'an in China and you compare it with a Qur'an in Siberia and even if you went back in history 100 years, 500 years, 1000 years, 1200 years in fact the most ancient manuscripts that we have of the Qur'an date to a time that is almost contemporaneous to the time of the Prophet ﷺ. It means we have manuscripts of the Qur'an dating back all the way back to the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And the amazing thing is that if you examined these manuscripts, you would find that the actual words of the Qur'an are exactly the same. Okay, the style of writing may be different. The use of certain diacritical marks may be different. But the actual words remain exactly the same. This is a fact. Actually, this is one of the greatest arguments against those people who claim. There are some people who are trying to claim that the Qur'an has evolved, it's an evolved text. They're trying to make the same claims about the Qur'an that have been discovered about the Bible. But no one or very few people take these claims really seriously. And part of the reason is, is that the sheer weight of evidence against such a claim is there. Because we have these texts of the Qur'an, and we have different manuscripts in places like, for example, Tashkent, uh, we have manuscripts in Cairo, we have manuscripts in Yemen, we have very very ancient manuscripts that date really to the time, very close to the time of the Prophet ﷺ. It's a very important issue because if we are going to say that one of the evidences that we're going to put forward to show that Islam is indeed from Allah the creator of the heavens and the earth is the Qur'an and the things that the Qur'an says are a type of or constitute type of evidence then a person may quite rightly ask well how do we know the Qur'an is authentic and to be perfectly honest this is one of the issues that Muslims themselves bring up with for example the Bible or the Vedas or the teachings of Buddha or anyone else. One of the issues that we have is that, okay, well you claim these things are from this teacher or are from God or whatever, but prove it. How can we be sure that your 
scriptures are authentic. They, maybe they have been corrupted, maybe they have been distorted. Maybe there is some truth there and some falsehood there. So what we would like to do today is to do our best to show that the Qur'an is indeed a book that has been preserved from corruption and from distortion. So this is really a very, very important issue from one angle, because then when a person hears that something is from the Qur'an, or indeed for that matter, that something is from the Prophet Muhammad, and it has been authenticated as being from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you can be sure that this is something authentic, this is something verified, this is something that, not ha that has not been changed and corrupted over time. So this gives us a lot of confidence that what we're mentioning from the Qur'an is indeed something that is true and something that is correct. One of the things that I want to touch upon is the historical evidence of the preservation of the Qur'an. Now according to traditional Muslim sources, according to the teachings of the Hadith, the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those people who came after him, the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, the way that the Qur'an was preserved, at least in terms of writing, because there are two ways that the Qur'an has been preserved. It has been preserved partially through writing. Now, mostly in Western culture, for example, a lot of emphasis and a lot of importance is given to the preservation in writing. Whereas, in fact, it is not necessarily true that something has been written down in a scriptural form is necessarily the most authentic thing. Of course, during the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Qur'an was never actually collected as one book. And the reason for that, of course, is that as long as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was alive, it was still possible that some more verses of the Qur'an would be revealed. However, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to recite the Qur'an from beginning to end every Ramadan. And in the Ramadan before he died, the Prophet ﷺ recited the Qur'an twice. And the angel Gabriel, Jibreel, used to come and go through the Qur'an with the Prophet ﷺ in the month of Ramadan. So the Qur'an was known from Surah Al-Fatiha to Surah An-Nas. It was known by the people who used to memorize the Qur'an and what was known as the Qur'an was understood but it was never written down as what is called a Mus'haf. They wrote down the Qur'an in various pieces and fragments but it was never written down as one book. However, after the Prophet ﷺ died, there were what was called the Wars of Ridda. These are the wars of apostasy, when many people began to apostatize and leave the religion of Islam. And there were some wars against those people. And in those wars, many of those people who had memorized the entire Qur'an, who were known as the Hufaz, the memorizers or the preservers from Hafiz, which means to preserve in Arabic, these people had preserved and memorized the entire Qur'an in their memory. So these people, many of them, were killed in battle. So it was said to Abu Bakr, who was the ruler of the Muslims, the first caliph, some people said to him, why don't you write down the Qur'an to make sure that we don't suffer from what the people suffered from who came before us, meaning the Jews and Christians from their distortions and the corruptions in their text because we're afraid then maybe the preservation of the Qur'an will not be maintained. So anyway, there was some dispute about this because some of them said, well, how can we do something that the Prophet ﷺ never did? But they agreed and Umar and Abu Bakr having discussed it with each other, they agreed and the companions agreed that this was a good idea. 
So what they did is they got someone called Zayd ibn Thabit. They got him to organize this collection of the Qur'an and with the agreement of those people who were the Huffaz who were still living, they agreed to collect the Qur'an and to write it as one Mus'haf from the beginning to the end. And they got a unanimous decision about that. In fact, they got an agreement on every single ayah Two people, a minimum of two people had to agree. Every single ayah of the Qur'an, they had to agree that this was the right ayah and it was in the right place also. So this was the first Mus'haf. And it stayed with Abu Bakr. And then when Abu Bakr died, it was given to Umar. And when Umar died, he gave it to his daughter Hafsa. Hafsa was also one of the wives of the Prophet wasallam. Now after the death of Umar, the Islam had spread over many, many different lands. Islam had entered into Persia, it had entered into Egypt, and there were so many people becoming Muslim. Now some of the people began to argue with each other about the reading of the Qur'an, because the Prophet wasallam, and it's very important, he had allowed the Qur'an to be read in seven different dialects. They were all considered to be the Qur'an and the Prophet allowed the reading of the Qur'an in those seven different dialects. However, some of the people who read it in one dialect began to argue with those who read it in another dialect and they were saying, our reading is the right reading and your reading is the wrong reading and vice versa. And they nearly came to blows over this issue. So one of the generals came to Uthman ibn Affan and said, look, this is a problem. Let us unite the people under one reading and this way we will avoid dissension and controversy. So Uthman, he said, okay, this is a good idea. What we will do is we will unite the people under the reading of the Qur'ayshi dialect. Was the dialect that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to use the most often. So once again, he ordered a compilation of the Qur'an. And who did he get? The same Zayd ibn Thabit. They got the same Zayd ibn Thabit to make a compilation of the Qur'an. And once again, he got a total agreement for each ayah. A minimum of two people had to agree about this ayah, that it was correct and that its placement in the Qur'an was correct. And once again, they made a compilation of the text of the Qur'an. Then they compared this new compilation with the compilation that had been made by Abu Bakr. And they found that the two corresponded exactly. They were both corresponding exactly one with the other. So then Uthman ordered that every copy that people had made and every writing that people had made of the Qur'an should be destroyed. And the way that they destroyed it was by burning it, okay? This is considered to be a clean and pure way to destroy the text of the Qur'an. So every Qur'an they had was either washed as the Mus'haf that was given to uh, from Abu Bakr and Umar to Hafsa, it was actually washed clean. And every type of copy of the Qur'an was destroyed except this, what is called the Imam Manuscript. That was the Imam Manuscript compiled by Uthman under the supervision of Zayd ibn Thabit. And from that, seven copies or maybe nine copies were made. And these copies were distributed all over the Muslim world at the time. And every Qur'an therefore had to be an exact replica, an exact copy of those Qur'ans. So we still have, according to many experts in the field, we still have two or three of those original manuscripts existing that was compiled in the time of Uthman ibn Affan, which is only some uh, 20 years after the death of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is really an astounding miracle of the Qur'an. But Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, He said that verily we have revealed the dhikr, 
the reminder and upon us is the preservation of it. So this is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite wisdom has preserved the Qur'an. This is a book that is authentic. This is a book that we can trust in and we can believe in. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.